Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Hearthstone Deck Spotlight. My name is Tommy Wave, and today we'll be taking a look at Nick Chipper's Beast Hunter. Uh, Beast Hunter is something that we've been playing quite a lot of. We've really explored Aggro Hunter, Beast Hunter, Midrange Hunter, Hybrid Hunter, Secret Hunter, all of these different things we've uh, definitely been playing a lot of, especially over the last uh, expansion as Hunter has really come into its own as being one of the uh, most dominant decks of the various different post and pre-nerf formats from this expansion. Uh, and Nick Chip has got a really interesting evolution of the uh, that Beast Hunter archetype, I guess, uh, in case you haven't been uh, maybe paying attention or, or haven't been on the, the cutting edge of what's been going on in the metal lately, uh, one of the most recent things that's happened with a lot of these Beast Hunter, uh, mid-range Hunter decks is uh, people starting to play Master's Call alongside Dire Frenzy. And what this has given the deck is a little bit of a, uh, a weaker early game, strictly those, you know, those first three turns. Um, but it gives the deck so much more late game. You know, you can Dire Frenzy onto even just a Timberwolf or a Spring Pour or something like that. And then once you're ripping them out of the deck with Master's Calls, all of a sudden your opponent has to face down, you know, a bunch of one mana 4-4s four with Rush. Uh, and that can be a pretty nightmare, nightmare scenario for them. Puts a lot of good stuff back into your deck for you to draw. Master's Call keeps you high on gas, keeps you... Uh, with a lot of resources, a lot of options as well, as the Master's Call can, you know, really get you a, uh, you know, you, you could be getting one drops, you could be getting Tundra Rhinos, you could be getting more mid rangey combo y things, Scavenging Hyena, Crackling Rays, more to go with those cards. Like, Master's Call gives you just a lot of options. Now, obviously, including Dire Frenzy and Master's Call, uh, you know, they have cost the deck uh, some things like we were talking about before. And what Nick Chip has also included in here is two copies of Revenge of the Wild, a card that we uh, haven't yet played with, with uh, Hunter decks, at least I can't remember a time that we did play with it, but Revenge of the Wild was picked as potentially one of the most busted cards from the new expansion. I think a lot of people rated it quite highly, but the way that things have panned out, there hasn't really been a, a strict combo deck for it that's been uh, very good. And I think what Nick Chipper is going for here is uh, maybe a little bit of combo potential, but also quite a fair Revenge of the Wild. You know, we're hoping to get paired up against maybe some other mid-range or um, minion-based decks, do some good trading, and then all of a sudden we can Revenge of the Wild and get, you know, two or three minions back for the low low price of two mana so i think there's a lot of high roll potential here but there's also a lot of potential for revenge of the wild to be completely dead especially against a deck like big spell mage or something like that uh they're going to be killing a lot of your their minions on uh, a lot of your minions on their turn and you're not going to get a lot of opportunities to trade in and and get some value back so uh definitely comes with uh, a little bit of downside it's not all upside uh, and including these two revenge of the wild in the deck also costs you uh, some deck building slots just like the master's call and the dire frenzy and it looks like nick chipper has chosen to uh, cut uh, one of the one drops out you can see we've only got springport and timberwolf, timberwolf no dire moles in here uh, which is very interesting that they've gone for timberwolf over dire mole that's uh, uh i think that's a very very interesting um uh comparison there but i'll trust them on this one they did hit hit legend with this deck um so certainly not going to doubt them uh, and they've also cut some um some Hunter's Marks. I think we, we've been seeing a lot of, you know, one candle shot, one Hunter's Marks in some of these decks since the Hunter's Mark nerf. And instead, we've just got a, uh, a Singleton Wing Blast in here, which uh, I'm very keen to play with. I think Wing, Wing Blast is a little bit of an underrated uh, removal spell, but there certainly aren't a lot of slots in the deck to fit it in. So uh, we'll see how that one goes today. Uh, and we also don't have any, you know, Savannah High Mains or anything like that. Strictly just the Rexar at the top end, but I definitely agree with this one. Um, as I'm not not too big a fan of the uh, the Savannah High Main in a deck like this. Uh, so regardless, a lot of changes to the archetype. So we're certainly going to be trying to play some games and you know learn when when we should be holding Revenge of the Wild, what kind of matchups it's good in, and, and things like that. Um, and we're going to try and relearn this uh, this archetype as we go along. So hopefully we get some wins. But regardless, if you're looking to play a deck like this on the ladder and just looking to see how it works, hopefully you get some learns with me, regardless of if we win or lose. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, here we are with uh, with the Hunter. A bit of an interesting draw here. Uh, definitely going to send back these two. So I do have a uh, some stats up for this deck. Looking at the mulligan guide here, it does look like uh, Scavenging Hyena is a pretty high win rate card. 
looking for things like spring pour, crackling razor mall, master's call, candle shot's good. I think we can just deploy this, it's fine. Bit of a slow-ish draw, especially if our opponent has a North Shire Cleric, it may may really complicate things. Hopefully it's just our opponent thinking about if they want a coin here. Maybe it's like Mechathune, they've got a Loot Hoarder and a Dead Ringer, they want to try and coin out one of them, play the other one, turn two, and... But seeing the candle shot, they're a bit more... have a bit more trepidation. This could get pretty rough for our opponent if they don't have, like, a Holy Smite or something. Razor more onto the uh, Scavenging Hyena for something like uh, Untargetable plus Health. We could go with the Divine Shield, but I feel like maybe our opponent would have Holy Smited if mm. they had it, but maybe they Shadow Visioned and found something. Let's go with the Divine Shield. No, we missed out on 3 damage, but I think just playing a more resilient game, game plan might be better. Definitely going to Dire Frenzy up. What do we want to Dire Frenzy? That's the question. Dire Frenzy, the Scavenging Hyena, kind of puts all of our eggs in one basket. I think Crackling Razor is maybe a better draw in the deck as well. What to do? If you're on YouTube, let me know right now. Let me know. Chuck that in the uh, the comments section. You think we should be uh, getting the Scav or the, the Crackling Razor Maul? I think at least this way, if our opponent like has a Shadow of Death or something for the Razor Maw, then we get the buff. However, if we'd buffed the Scavenging Hyena, it means if our opponent's trying to set up a Mass Hysteria, uh, the Scavenging Hyena is extremely unlikely to die. Whereas if they Mass Hysteria here, the the Hyena does die. But the, the Crackling Razor Maw doesn't. Hits him for another 6. Okay. Double Lash? Lash Smite, neither of which they got from the, uh, the... Neither of which they got from the Shadow Visions. In a bit of an awkward situation here where, uh... Okay. Coin mass hysteria. Wouldn't they have gotten both of the uh, the kills if they had just um, mass hysteria though? No, they wouldn't have. Hmm. All right. I guess we're on the uh, hero power game plan. How many minions does this deck have? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen if you include Unleash the Hounds. Hmm. 
Hmm. This kind of sucks because we kind of want to like flanking strike and then dire frenzy onto it. We do not get the chance, and our opponent might have like a cube or something. Though this does seem more resurrecty. Definitely a matchup where we can kind of see these revenges, Revenge of the Wilds are not doing much. Must consider. Well, this is tough. On one hand, we could kill command this, wing blast, and what attack that. Deal. On the other hand, maybe Kill Command is one of our best lines to killing our opponent, but I think we need to not die to this Lyra. Okay. Definitely should have hero power this turn instead, I think. Yeah. Maybe we should have not die frenzied either. We should have just gone like unleash, attack, 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 revenge, attack, 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 revenge. Which does how much damage? I got it off Lyra too. Um should deal nine, right? Three, then three, then. No, we could have killed that that grizzly, but then we wouldn't. Oh my gosh, this is lethal! Extra arms, sure. We're pretty dead here, and we can definitely point to that turn where you know our opponent had the had the right answers for what we had on board with that mass hysteria, and our follow up was just like our hand was two revenge of the wilds and two pieces of removal. Uh, we were never really going to, uh, like, we'd have to hit a pretty good couple of draws to get back, back into that game, but, uh, well played to our opponent, they did exactly what they needed to do, and, uh, put the game just out of reach for us, but I think we definitely could have played that late game a bit better. GG's. Okay. Here we are. Up against the mage. Now, I will send the tracking back, as it actually has one of our, kind of, lower win rate. Uh, cards and we do we keep Rexar against the mage that's the question hmm what mage would we think it is big spell odd hmm I think we'll kick the Rexar back. Though I will have to do a bit of a deep dive later and try and find if, uh... Try and find out 
what the win rate percentage of uh, is when we play Rexar versus a uh, odd mage. I guess against most mage archetypes. I think we'll go for a spring pour just to make our opponent hero power on two. Like I think that's fine. Do we master's call here? I assume so. Job's done. Cat. Well, whether we wanted him or not, there he is. Our opponent has the guts to uh, hero power this turn. They do. Got a firefly or something to back it up. They do not. Hmm. They can only take out one of them. For sure they take out Huffer, so we might be able to get some advantage off this Timberwolf, maybe, with like a Tundra Rhino or Scavenging Hyena Lynx. Let's see what happens here. Out of my oh, Stonehill is a great play. I mean the gold Stonehill. Ooh. Yeah. Kind of vaguely wobbling that shield. Artifice a blast wave? Dragon's Fury. Everybody dies. Mm hmm. I think we can actually maybe follow up with the Tundra Rhino here. Keep that pressure on them. If this is more of a kind of less aggro odd mage, then yeah, they have to rely on voodoo, doc voodoo dolls for a uh, single target removal. Alright, looks like we're going to be trying to win this with Rexar, I think. Like, Rexar and Dire Frenzy. I mean, 
I think we should give our opponent, like, Astro Bits of food. Um... Six mana poisonous rush. Actually, I'm gonna go for the snap jaw here. I think. I wonder. I'll take the poisonous branch. And we just cross our fingers and hope our opponent doesn't have Jaina this turn. So I really don't think we can beat Jaina. Welcome to this show! So many cards. Hmm. Well, we do have this Revenge of the Wild. I feel like I just want to go, like... Hero power, zombies to kill that wing lost this. Yes. This is definitely difficult. Especially if our opponent has like a jungle line here. Reality interesting. Woven. Very interesting. Hmm. Stealth Crackling Razor Balls. Could be pretty good. Hmm. Or we take it with a dime or we can play it this turn. Maybe we should have gone for plus one, plus one there, so it doesn't die to a flame strike. Yeah, it probably would have been the best choice. Yeah. Oh well. Still in there. And if we can ever get a good Revenge of the Wild turn, I think, I think we'll be in good shape. Also, if our opponent leaves this in play and we get to uh, Dire Frenzy it. I think that might be one of the best minions we could possibly shuffle in a... Eh? Okay, cool. Yeah, we get a we get our chance here. Huh. 
All right, I'm gonna go with this. I mean, it does mean we don't get to die frenzy this, which. Why isn't that showing up? Wah, 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 wah. Wah, there it is. We just subscribed. Thank you so much. Let me just yeah cover the the whole thing, huh? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Lee. Oh my gosh, Baron Gadone. Oh, you've come at the wrong time. Hmm. Still get to keep uh, this zombies though. Hmm. I wonder. Jeez. Okay, we have a chance. We have to deal three. Yeah, we've got the unleash the hounds. For sure. Can even do the cheeky, like, run all of these dogs into that jungle line and then resummon them. Oof. What a tasty game. Who's the odd mage there? I know Odd Mage has a very, very good matchup against most kind of uh, beasty, hybridy hunters, but yeah, that early game was a bit rough. But Power of Rexa, Dire Frenzy in that late game, you know, that's exactly what we were talking about in the introduction, where uh, Dire Frenzy just gives you a massive punch in the late game. So, GG's, well played. Okay, here we are, up against a mage with the uh, Beast Hunter. I think I'm going to send back the uh, Timberwolf. We'll keep the Candle Shot. Not that I think the Candle Shot has too much value. Well, maybe we should send it back, try and find our uh, our Master's Calls and things like that. Mm. Yeah, okay. I've convinced myself. Yes, let's see all those Stay Wavies. Thank you very much. I don't know what happened there, but... Just had a bit of a crash. Hmm. Do we think our opponent would go for a turn one coin hero power onto this timber? Now. Let's find out. Let's find out. I I assume they would, right? Like it's too dangerous to leave this in play and let us hit it with a crackling razor mall. A plague of odd mages, yes. That is the um after locusts. But before Famine, is Odd Mages. We'll Hero Power here, and then we might like Tracking Hero Power next turn. Drop these on turn 4, maybe Flanking Strike. But this does seem like another game we're going to have to dig! Dig out with the big boy, big Rexile boy. Uh, and let's see if we can find him. Having to choose between Die Frenzy and Master's Call is really rough. Uh, might get lucky here. Our opponent might go for like a Stonehill Defender or something like that. We can get the Scav double Spring Pour off. Of my 
cool. Still don't know if that's good enough, but we gotta do something. Can't just do nothing. Fire eaters are, are tremendous. Just kind of as like a essentially an arcane blast, I guess. You know, arc arcane blast without spell powers. One mana, two two extra damage. Really helps tie this deck together. I think it's a tremendously designed card. King the Rhino. Okay. Okay. See that uh, Dragon's Fury. There she blows. Yep. Ooh, Gold Blast Wave. These are much more dangerous than they were last time. I think we're better off saving and kind of combining these on a more powerful turn. A good pickup off uh, Stonehill. Ugh. I don't know how much longer we can wait. But... nine here to 14 Ooh, rough as guts the future is ours Out of my jungle. behold the tools of creation hmm all right, deck. Give me a spicy one. It's the spiciest boy. The eternal hunt has begun. Hmm. Oh. 
Alright. So you're telling me there's a chance. The slimmest of chances. Ugh! Behold the tools of creation. I don't think we're too concerned about our opponent drawing cards. We just want to try and not die. Our opponent also on the not dying game plan. I wonder what that would be. Leroy! I haven't seen Leroy in many of the controlling odd mage decks. I don't doubt it. Did we play an elemental last turn? I don't think so. Hmm. turn down. Still on 11. But these odd mage decks don't have a lot of out of hand burn. Don't have access to fireball, frostbolt, these times with things. Spirit of the we do have access to Ragnaros. The Fire Lord himself. Two of them. <laughs> oh jeez. It's not looking good for the home team, friends. All right, looks like it's going to be uh, the poisonous rush cleave. So we're hoping for the spider. Oh, close. That was pretty close. And we can still do like... This. But our opponent can hero power Janelai. Like, I think we're in a pretty, uh, pretty bad situation. Jaina? Coin? Do they still have the coin? They don't. Okay. I don't have any kill commands left, but we do have a dream. <laughs> mm -hmm. Spirit of Deck in a dream, friends. Deck in a dream. Alright. 
do your worst, idiot. My lineup of invincible taunt minions. Get yourself closer to fatigue, friend. We got a 50-50. We got a coin flip's chance in hell of winning. By, by winning, I mean not losing. Okay, where is it? we're in there. Not immediately losing the game. No! Oh, we can't do it. We can do this one, though. Which uh, is going to gain us a lot of life. Three, six, eight. Yeah, looks like we are we are dead. If we had taken that timber wolf, actually, we wouldn't have died because we'd gain the uh, one extra life. So, get our panther well played. Oh, tight one. Definitely can see why uh, odd mage would be favoured in that matchup, as uh, really all of our early game plays are just so vulnerable to that hero power. But we'll take a look at the deck. Uh, I was really impressed with it. I think that this is a really nice evolution on Beast Hunter. However, I think it's mostly meta-dependent as to how effective Revenge of the Wild is. I think if you're uh, seeing a lot of Odd Paladin, if you're seeing a lot of uh, other Hunter decks... In fact, this, this seems like a great card for the Mirror Match. Um, but, as you could see, against a lot of these more controlling decks, uh, you know, Odd Mages, Big Spell Mages, Control Priest, things like that, uh, Revenge of the Wild is not great. Uh, it really rotted in her hand and didn't do too much, but I still have confidence in the card, and I think I'm still gonna jump onto ladder and play some more games with this deck, because I, I do really like the selection of cards that they've gone for here. Regardless, if you are watching on YouTube, of course, all the links are available in the description, including a link over to the Hearthpone deck article. Please jump over there, give Nick Chipper a plus one, leave a lovely thoughtful comment, like I know you will. Uh, you can also find my details down there as well, including a link over to Twitch. That's the best place to catch me. You can watch us uh, goof up these decks live here on Twitch, Tommy underscore wave, or you can check us out on Twitter at Tommy underscore wave. But until next time, stay safe, stay wavy, eat the rich, and, uh, I mean, get revenge. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that video. Check out other ones over here, or come subscribe to the wave pool for more excellent times. Yeah.